All right, so the question we're really attempting to answer is, is there a relationship between runs and strikeouts per game? Okay, we're testing to see really whether these are independent. And independent would mean that there's no relationship. Okay, and so think about, we just finished chi-squared test for independence, or we are finishing that. But those variables that we're looking at in chi-squared are categorical. These runs and strikeouts are um, quantitative. So the parameter that we're interested in could actually be like the true correlation between um, these two variables. Okay, but another way to look at it is that since slope, remember slope is R, S, Y over S, X, if the correlation is zero, the slope is zero. So really the parameter that we're interested in is beta. Beta is the true slope between runs and strikeouts per game. And our null hypothesis is that there is no relationship. Okay? And our alternative in this case is that there is a relationship. And I'm just going to go with B is not equal to zero, but I could certainly even really, I'm really testing that. It's B is less than zero. Okay? We see this negative association. We think this slope is negative. Okay? All right. So that's the PHA assumptions. The first assumption is obviously that we have a random sample. Now, this 11 games that we have sampled here are not random. They're the first 11 games of the season. But I guess we just need to assume that they're representative of all games. And I don't know that that's an unreasonable assumption. Um, it is early in the season. And... You know, we played some good teams, and we played some bad teams, but that's going to happen all the time. Okay, so we'll just to say a random sample is okay. The second thing is that the data are linear. All right, that's an assumption that we need to make. Well, how do we verify that assumption? Well, we look at the residual plot. Okay, the residual plot doesn't show structure. So this is satisfied. because of unstructured residuals. Okay? The third assumption is that the response varies normally about the regression line. Okay? And the way we're going to test this is we're going to look at the residuals. And we're going to see, do the residuals sort of follow a normal model? Well, here's a histogram of the residuals. This is something we got from Minitab. And what I see is, clearly, the residuals are not normal. But again, remember, these are real data. But I don't see any huge signs of non-normality. And the test we're going to run is actually a t-test. Um, and that's very robust. But I see sort of unimodal. I see sort of symmetry. I don't see any major outliers. So we're okay here. So no major signs of non-normality. Non-normality in the residuals. Okay, that's the third assumption. Is that the standard deviation of the residuals is constant for all values of x. Okay, let me just talk about this a little bit, and you'll read about this. But this is from the residual plot. Basically, what we see is, how do these residuals vary about the line? Does it change um, as we move to the right in this graph, or move to the left, or whatever? Well, what I see is that, you know, there's no real pattern, and it also doesn't do stuff like this. It's not like the residuals are big for small values and then become small, something like that. That would violate this assumption. Okay, we'll talk more about it, but right now we'll say that this is satisfied. Okay? All right, we're going to do a, this is called a linear regression t-test. Okay, and if we think about the test statistic, if we think about our null hypothesis says that the slope is zero. We got a slope of 
negative 2.58. Okay, so that's right here. We can find the, uh, the number of standard deviations away that is, and that's our test statistic. So this is negative 2.58. Minus zero over, well, the standard error of this statistic. And the standard error of that statistic is 0.5439. Okay, compute that. And what you'll find is that it's equal to negative 4.74. So actually, they gave us that. Okay, negative 4.74. Okay, the degrees of freedom is 9 because we've played 11 games and it's n minus 2. So if we want to find the p-value, we're going to use the t model. Okay, we're going to use tcdf. So we're going to go to distribution. We're going to go to tcdf. We're going to do negative hella big number, comma negative, what is this, 4.74, comma 9. And I get a p-value of 5.29 times 10 to the negative fourth. So 0.0000529 is the p-value, which is really, really small. Okay, enough for us to reject that home. Now, if we go up here, we see that they say the p-value is 0.01, but this is always a two-sided p-value. So really, ours is half of that. Okay, but it does give you the p-value. I want you to note that. It's right there, 0 0.001. Okay, and so what are we going to do? We love it here. We reject that hoe because the p-value is less than alpha. Therefore, there is significant evidence of a relationship, of a negative relationship. Of a negative association between strikeouts and runs, which makes sense. I mean, if you're striking out, you're not getting on base. You have no chance of getting on base. Okay? You don't make the defense play. Okay? You would, you're going to score, if everyone struck out, there would be no chance of scoring any runs. Okay? If you hit the ball, at least they can mess up, you can get on base. Things can happen. Well, and we've sort of shown that there's evidence of a strong relationship. So maybe our emphasis here on the varsity baseball team of reducing strikeouts is a good one. Okay, now we can also estimate the slope using the confidence interval. And so let me just talk about that for a second. The slope, or remember, confidence of our estimates plus or minus margin of errors. Okay, our estimate for the slope is B. Plus or minus, it's going to be T star times the standard error of B. Okay. So our estimate was negative 2.58 plus or minus, we'll get T star in a minute. Well, the standard error was 0.5439. And T star, we're going to get by using inverse T. Okay, and if we're going to do a 95% interval, it's going to be inverse T 0 0.025 comma 9. Okay, well, I don't have that in my calculator, so I'm going to use the T-sheet. All right, so I have here a T-table. Um, I'm looking at a tail probability of 0.025, and I'm looking at 9 degrees of freedom. So my T-star is 2.262. So I'm going to put 2.622 right here. Okay, so let's compute our margin of error. Two point yeah crap. Um okay here we go. Two point six two two times point five four three nine. Our margin of error is one point four two, so okay, so if we do this, I think that's negative one point one four two three. Uh, what the heck? I'm at, I'm screwing it up. Hold on one second. All right, it's this. It's negative, and I'm an idiot. It's negative 4 to negative 1.14. So that means we're 95% confident that the true slope is between 
negative 4 and negative 1.14, which means that we're 95% confident that if we strike out one less time per game, that'll give us between 1.14 and 4 runs more per game, Okay, which is quite a large range, but again, we have a small sample. But at least we have more runs per game, or if I interpret this, more strikeouts, less runs per game here. Okay, so there's a lot of stuff going on. But this is where things sort of come together, where regression comes first full circle with significance tests, where we see that chi-squared test for independence, test for in, uh, an association between two categorical variables, and this test for an association between two quantitative variables. Okay, so the last thing is um, here's some more data from our baseball team, and this is by individual, and we're not giving each data point a person's name but some of you are on this plot, um, we're looking to see, is there a relationship between your batting average and the number of times you strike out per plate appearance? Okay, and so you can read that and do that. So this is due when you walk in class. Um, make sure, well, if you're watching this, you got it done, um, but you're going to turn this in. We might discuss a little bit too.